it's still raining. Oh, that's good. Hello everyone, welcome back to Outside the Box. I know this is pretty much all we do around here now. Not gonna lie, Slug is taking a little bit longer than anticipated, but not because it's challenging really all that much. It's mostly due to the weather. It's really hard for me to paint while it's cold and raining. I have done a little bit of progress. If you follow me on any of the socials, you know that I've already painted the Triceratops head in gold, and I've since masked out the eyes and have them spray painted in with a new uh, chrome blue paint that I have. I'm happy with how the blue looks for sure, but I'm not sure exactly how good of a masking job I was able to do, only because of the curving nature of these eyes. So I did of course have to use my special curving masking tape and then just regular masking tape surrounding it. I'll probably unmask this later this week because I do have to get it on camera, and so we'll find out how good of a job I did. If anything's a little bit off, I can always go back and touch it up, but that's what we've got here so far. Today though, on this very special Outside the Box, we have another super important package that came in, and uh, two other regular ones that have been sitting here since last year. Let's get started with a super special one though and this one comes to us from longtime viewer of the channel Dominic thank you so much bro I do appreciate this uh, when he told me what he came across on the discord and offered to sell it to me for an excellent price I really couldn't say no even though I wasn't exactly 100% in the market for these but in my eventual quest to, to maybe rebuild this collection I couldn't say no I do feel I have to take advantage of these opportunities when they arise right uh, let me be super careful there we go. And, um, oh, I think we have, we have a letter, I think. <laughs> oh, man, we haven't had, we haven't had a letter since I think the very first outside the box. Here we go. Oh, shit. Okay, let me, let me, let me put this down. Um, I hope there's no ob obscenities here, uh, Dominic. I'm just <laughs> showing that off here. A couple of pages here. <clears throat> hang on, hang on. Oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, Jose, I just wanted to take a quick minute to say thank you. Wow, nice. You opened my eyes to a world I never considered. To me, modifying one of my bots was always unthinkable and almost hearsay. Yeah, I, I know the feeling, dude. I know the feeling in my mind. But you changed my mind when I was first introduced to you with your Grimlock custom, and you made my perfect SS86 Grimmy uh, look like one of Cinderella's ugly step sisters you're very welcome dude <laughs> yeah it that that is one thing that does kind of suck about this is that you know you try to do a really good job as far as these customizations and then people do tell you wow whenever i look at my grim like it looks like you know not customized right to put it mildly anywho since then you got me hooked uh let me tell you i needed it this world has given me a creative outlet i have been desperately needing yeah it, it, it is, it really is, you know? I mean, it's definitely different from just doing a regular model kit to take something, and I've said this before, that's not intended to be disassembled, it's not intended to be to be reworked, but to be able to overcome those challenges and to make it something more than what it originally was. It's a good feeling, it really is. Uh, know this for what you know, what you don't know, you are a great inspiration within this community. Thank you so much, dude, I appreciate that. And a good teacher, wow. That's something I never thought. I don't consider myself a teacher at all, but but I do I do get a good feeling that people do learn from what I'm doing here. Um, and I always learn a lot myself as well. So it's vice versa, dude, 100%. Uh, it takes a lot of cojones, cojones, official word, cojones, to do what you have done to create your following. Not everyone can do it. You don't need hundreds of thousands or millions of followers to make a difference. Would be nice though, huh? No, but, but you're right, you don't, you don't. <laughs> As one of the older guys in the community, no, 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 we're, we're, not, we're not older, we're just seasoned. That's all we are, seasoned. I love watching the creativity of all the younger guys we have there and how far some have come during the time I've been a part of it, 100%. I have seen a lot of improvement myself. That's always heartwarming. You, sir, are one of the main reasons we have so much budding talent forming in our community and if anybody doesn't know, he's talking about the Discord. Apart from the YouTube community, it definitely feels 100% like much more of a community, closer-knit community in the Discord. So anybody that wants to join, feel free to do so. Be proud of what you have created. You have become an inspiration, mentor, friend, and big... Oh, I thought I said big footer. Big brother. Big brother. Wow. Am I older than you, dude? Am I older than you? 
doesn't matter. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Now, page two, right? Page two. Too many. With that, I'll quit driving <laughs> and say I have included something else for you in the box. For all you YouTuber, you may not get this. So like, follow, subscribe, click the damn bell, then join us over on Jose's Twitch and our Discord. I couldn't have said it better myself. Man, thank you so much. <laughs> as for <laughs> as for all that, follow and watch Jose's Twitch streams. You might get this. This is proof. Catch you on the next stream and in the Discord, Dominic Zen. My friend, thank you so much, dude. That's a lovely note, man. I, I, I really do appreciate that. 100%. Yeah, folks, you can you can catch me on Twitch. I know I say this almost all videos, but it's fun over there. It's fun. It's a it's a different vibe. It's a different vibe, you know. Okay, we have that. Now, I want this to be on camera. Just just look at the immaculate packaging here. Like this is like custom packaged here just for me. I don't doubt one bit that what's in here survived the trip. 100%. Uh, now, I want to see if I can get this on camera. I'm looking at the screen here. Hope it doesn't fall off as soon as I take this off. Okay. Oh, oh, oh okay. It's, it's wrapped up. It's wrapped up. Here we go. Here we go. Dude, look at this. Look at this package here. Oh my God. This is with love and care. 100%. Okay. I can already see the thing. I can already see the thing. Oof. Can we see it? <laughs> can we see it? Um, I think there's something else over here. We're gonna take a look at this here real quick. Oh man, my hands, my hands are uh, are trembling. Hang on, hang on. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Holy moly. Oh. Yes. This is Transformers Animated, not Legacy, Jazz. Holy shit, do I love this guy. Now, Dom did tell me it had a little bit of wear. I think it has some looseness on some of the joints, which you would kind of expect that from these kinds of figures. I don't know how well it was taken care of. Um, he just bought it himself, but just just visually, it looks, it looks pretty damn good. I do suspect, I'm not entirely sure, that it might have a little bit of yellowing on the white. I don't remember if he was fully white when he was originally released. I think he was, I wanna say he was. I mean, he was definitely white in the animated show, that's for sure. And I can tell there's a little bit of like, some of that metallic silver paint is kind of worn out from like the edges here. That's to be expected. The way he was kind of describing it though, I was kind of, um, I was kind of thinking it was gonna look a lot worse. This looks really good. This looks really good. Now, of course, it is missing, unfortunately, the uh, the weapons. Jazz did originally have these exhausts that connected here on the sides that would also form like these nunchuck weapons in bot mode. He doesn't have them, sadly. And I'm thinking to myself, they weren't very complicated looking weapons. So I don't know if there's maybe a 3D model out there that I could possibly use to paint myself, add a little rope to the middle and um, include them, or maybe even find some like on eBay loose. I don't know, but I would certainly take a peek out there though. Of course, if anybody knows of any, let me know. I would really appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and transform this guy. Okay, we're, we're gonna take a look at the bottom here. Obviously there's a ton of visible robot parts in the bottom as they all have, as they should have. I think I remember how to transform this guy. Uh, I know it's not complicated. Take these arms off here. Oh, that does feel, that does feel really loose. Yeah. <laughs> I do have that one joint tightening uh, solution. I think it's called Kiki's joint solution. I may have to end up trying that out on here. It worked pretty well on our Cosmos customization, or if not, we can always do like the crazy glue method as well. Okay, I know these legs have to turn. I'm not sure what disconnects where exactly. There we go. There we go. And then these fold out like that so that's the legs and should have the feet down here now back in these days um, with animated um, there's quite a few joints that they don't typically have that you we kind of we kind of take for granted nowadays um, no real no real foot tilt or ankle tilt um, we do get a thigh rotation okay and the shoulders and the pelvic region they're all in ball joints I think that was pretty common back then too I think we're gonna rotate the shoulders out Right, and then this should rotate down. I don't remember if it clicks into place anywhere or if it just kind of, oh, there's a piece that comes down that allows it to kind of 
click into place these arms. I think these um, car door sections rotate up. They do. And you know what? I think that's I think that's kind of it. I think that's really, oh my God, I can hear it. I can hear the joints creaking. <laughs> oh, we're gonna give them lots of TLC here. And here we have Transformers Animated Jazz in all of his glory, even though he's kind of beat down, he still looks fantastic. Just oozing with style, oozing with style. I love this. The whole body proportions that he has. Oh man, this is good. I think it's almost a little bit liberating how in animated, the vehicles, obviously it's not an actual Porsche. It takes place in the future, so it's kind of just a futuristic sporty car, but then he still has the iconic red and blue striping on the body of the vehicle. And the design of it just looks fantastic though. Animated Jazz is one of those designs where they weren't really 100% slavish to how G1 looked. Mostly the design in the face. Clearly it looks like he's wearing headphones and some kind of like a, what is it? Like a golfer's cap, I think. And that stylish little chin stripe beard that he has. But of course, you're not gonna mess with the iconic shades, all right? That's still there. <laughs> oh, really good stuff, man. Now, obviously the question is, would I customize this guy? I remember a customizer telling me years ago when I kind of barely started customizing myself, how it would kind of be sacrilegious to take an original G1 transformer and giving it the customization process. Like you wouldn't really do that to an OG G1. I don't know if I really believe that. I think maybe it depends on the overall condition of it, but that thought kind of strikes me with animated. It's, it's pretty sacred to me, but I think because it's sacred, I would love to give it a new paint job and help it to make it look as good as possible. Absolutely, why not? I mean, I don't know when that would be, right? But um, he's not really going in the backlog. He's gonna get displayed. This guy's too good for that, come on. But I am so glad to have this guy once again. Thank you again, Dom, appreciate you, dude. Are we looking, we looking good, looking good. All right, there is something else though. Dom, what did you do? What did you do, good sir? This is, uh, this is something that's unopened, I think. Can we all find out together? I have no idea, oh, I can kinda, I can kind of see from from the back of here. I don't know what this is exactly. Let me not let me not peek. <laughs> what is this? What is this? I can't even see from the screen here. Oh, I see this now. Okay. <laughs> hey, look at that. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so the uh, the letter makes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have Link <laughs> from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh, I thought this was an amiibo. This is not an amiibo. Um, this is like an action figure, which I prefer, but but he has very clearly uh, noted here on the packaging that Link has pants. Apparently, apparently, but it doesn't always have pants though, right? Tell me in the comments. Link doesn't always have pants. Pants are optional, right? But, uh, but yeah, I know, Breath of the Wild. Okay, we've got pants. We did, we did since fix that. You have, to, you have to be on Twitch to understand. Anyways, anyways, this is great. This is great. Thank you, dude. I'm actually, um, I'm actually not sure if I should open this. I don't really typically keep figures sealed in the package, but I have to keep, I have to keep the whole pants thing. So I think for right now, we're going to keep this as is. I'm very tempted to open this up though. How many articulation points are in here? Doesn't even say. Uh, 20 points of articulation. That's pretty decent. Oh, I see. He does not come with the master sword though, right? Uh, it even says on here with soldier's broadsword. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's fine. That's okay. But he is wearing pants. That's, that's the important thing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Dom. Thank you so much, dude. Oh man. We are starting off really good. I highly doubt these other packages are going to live up to that. How do you live up to animated jazz and pants? You can't, you can't. But we're gonna see anyways. Uh, this one here, I don't know where it's from. It's obviously not from Amazon and it's not a Walmart box. I have no idea, I have no idea. Gotta take a sip first. Whoa, oh, it's from the Big Bad Toy Store. And the fact that this sticker is festive in nature, I'm guessing I may have had this since Last year? I mean, it, it literally says 2023, okay. Oh, oh, this was my little pile of loot that I had. Yeah, 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 yeah. We finally have here Studio Series Legacy Evolution uh, from the comic universe. Bludgeon, finally coming in. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this guy. And there's one other one in the box, but we're gonna save that one just a little bit later. Let's crack this guy open. Now I do have to say, I I really enjoyed, God, what's his name? Well, the figure that this one was kind of a remold from, right? Tarn, that's the guy. Really happy with that figure. It was a fantastic mold. Excellent articulation. 
good transformation, good tank mode, really good representation of Tarn from the IDW comics. And when I initially saw Bludgeon, I was a little bit bummed out they didn't try to like remold the chest area or any other parts really. He's got a new head, um, he's got a sword, and the same dual ion blasters that Tarn has, but um, he's mostly a recolor though, right? Now thankfully there is a really good 3D model, I think from Colts3D.com, that does an excellent job, it looks like, at replacing the chest and it adds some other parts to it to make it look that much more different that much more like bludgeon that if and when i ever got to a customization here i would definitely do that but um this guy still looks great though that is a damn good head sculpt too let's get it out oh he only has the one sword huh that's kind of whack um this sword is i don't know kind of simplistic i like the design of the blade that looks pretty cool not too bad uh, the hilt, however, there's not really much to it. It's just kind of a handle and a little side peg there, I guess, for storage. Maybe to clip it on the back, but nothing really design-wise. That's kind of unfortunate. And these are, I suspect, the same designs that Tarn had uh, for his Ion Fusion. Ion, can no. Fusion or Ion? Fusion, right? Fusion, because he was copying Megatron, right? But it's the same design, just a, just a new color format here. Which they look, they look nice, not too bad. They still have the hollowness underneath though. But yeah, this guy still looks great. It is a fantastic sculpt that is now used for another great character. But correct me if I'm wrong though, I think the only real difference is the helmet and just the color scheme though, right? I think the rest of the body is essentially the same that I can see. Okay, holds his blade very well. I really do wish it would have come with at least two blades. Like, come on, this guy, this guy needs him. We can definitely solve that, it's not an issue. <laughs> but still though, come on. Come on. And I don't know if it's coming up really on camera, but the details that he has on the inside of his mouth, some kind of like mechanical circuitry, that's a nice touch too. I like that very much. Now the new paint job, it does it does give like a different striking look kind of to it. Obviously very suiting for bludgeon. And it does give a different vibe to this, to this mold too. They kind of try to make it look like a skull here on the chest, which is what he's known to have, especially in the IDW comics, all right? And that's one thing that the uh, the 3D design from Colts3D.com really fixes too, so kind of look forward to doing that. But the joints, um, they don't feel tight, but they don't feel loose, they feel just right. The hinges for the hands are a little bit tight though. He still has like the clear plastic parts and it almost looks like the head has clear parts in it, but I don't think it's actually clear. It is kind of ironic though, how these weapon pieces back here kind of look like they're going to be blades, but they're not blades. They're not blades at all. It's a lie. It's an absolute lie. But he still looks great. I don't think he ever actually used any kind of like um, fusion cannons in the comics, all right? I mean, it certainly doesn't suit him as a whole look, as being more of a blade wielder. There you go. Pack an extra heat there. Not too shabby. Pretty good. Again, I don't think I would really display him like that myself. No, I would definitely print out the new parts, give him an extra sword, give him a new paint job, obviously. This is a really good looking bludgeon though. I'm glad I got him, but I don't know when I would actually ever feel the urge to uh, make a custom out of him. I do, however, want to check out tank mode, but first Coco. Oh, oh, that's good. All right, I'm definitely gonna need the instructions because I do not remember how to transform that guy. All right, um, yeah, it still looks good. <laughs> I think I will say though, that the color scheme for Bludgeon um, definitely works less in alt mode. Like a tank in these colors, like, I don't know, it's just not really jiving with me. Obviously the design itself is still great, but just the orange and the greens and the kind of purplish, it doesn't really seem to mix with it like a tank mode. And I forget if that's what Bludgeon actually was in the comic. I don't think he ever transformed, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, this is what we get in toy form. And I do think that when we replace like the chest piece that ends up being like the front of the tank, I don't know how much of a difference it's gonna actually make. There are some other uh, turret sections that get added to the side of the tank too. I'm sure that would help it look great. But overall, you know, it's not the, the same thing as Tarn, right? This still looks good though. I'm still happy with this. But I also ultimately wish it would have been an entirely new mold. At the end of the day, I don't think we do enough different from this uh, mold to make it turn into bludgeon. I don't think we do. He deserves better, he really does. Does the sword go anywhere? Right here on the side. Yeah, and even having the sword there on the side of the tank, it doesn't take away from the overall look. It looks nice. I don't think it's gonna be doing any damage there, but that's cool, that's fine. Yeah, I would definitely be curious to see how it would look like with those extra 3D printed parts and a full on paint job to make those 3D printed parts completely match up with the color of bludgeon. For that reason alone, I would like to work on him someday 
right? But for now, off to the backlog he goes. I'm gonna put him back into bot mode, actually. All right, keep an eye on him, Jazz. There was one other item in my pile of loot. Oh, here we have Studio Series 86, number 23, Autobot Ratchet from the hit movie Transformers, the movie, the good one. Um, yeah, I've been waiting on this guy. <laughs> I've been having this guy for about two months now. Of course, we opened up Ratchet a while back, so I pretty much know what to expect here. Oh, 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 there we go. Very nice, very nice indeed. Does look like he's primarily white plastic, which is to be expected. Um, as with Ironhide, quite a few clear pieces, right? I think more than I would care for at this point. Especially some weird pieces that very weirdly sit snugged up squeeze them between two plastic pieces. I don't know what that would do to that piece in the long term, but it's a unique transformation, that's for sure. But overall, Ratchet looks great. I love this guy. He does have a super tiny Autobot symbol though, right there underneath his chest. And of course the two on the, uh, on the shoulders here, that's modified from the original G1 simple red cross, which they can't really use, but I would fix in a customization. You better know it, yes. <laughs> I always felt a little bit weird about the uh, the gray kind of a crest piece on his helmet. I, I I don't know. I think I kind of preferred it as red to kind of match with the overall look of the rest of his body. So I don't know if I would do that on an eventual repaint, maybe. I would definitely get rid of all that uh, clearness on the plastic pieces, but that's that's just me. One of the things I think I would also do though, these um, these hinge sections that kind of stay on the sides of the legs, I think I would just have them, like just have them removed entirely in bot mode and just kind of use this as part forming. I would be totally okay with that to have a more cleaner looking bot mode too. I don't know if there's much you can do with the wheels here in the back. They don't really bother me too much though. This kind of sticks out a bit, but that's okay. Ah, but of course we have that famous crotch plate here. Now it looks like it was designed to be some separate pieces to accommodate the movement of the legs, but it's just one piece entirely. Plenty of customizers have taken it upon themselves to, to cut it appropriately to accommodate that articulation. I would, of course, 100% be doing that as well. Doesn't seem like it's too difficult of a customization too. I don't think so. I'm seeing now how the fists are white plastic painted in a very glossy red. That looks nice. I like how that looks. It just doesn't match with the rest of the red plastic though. It's not gonna be as glossy. I don't know if I would stick to gloss red for the repaint. I'm actually not sure. I don't know if I would go with a flat red or a gloss red. It would definitely be a gloss white, so maybe the gloss red would go better with it. I'm not sure. And he does come with dual blasters. That's great. Wow, double wielding blasters. He'll be able to overcome anything, right? Nothing's gonna get to this guy. No, nope, sir. No, sir. He is ready to defend to his dying breath. No spoilers. <laughs> and they look greatly molded too. Um, quite a bit of hollowness though, but that would seem like it's pretty easy to fix. I think I can get them looking quite a bit better, but I'm glad we have them both though. That's really cool. Nice job Hasbro. Very nice. All right, I want to see this guy in vehicle mode. Oh, good Lord. How the heck are you supposed to, oh. Oh shit. Okay. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, damn it. Okay. I think we got it. I think we got it. Everything looks pretty well in place, actually. Hang on. Something just went flying. Approximately 10 hours later. Oh, I got it. Oh, only the best content for my channel, okay. And I can tell you why it came flying off though. That piece is pretty loose, pretty loose. Oh man, I'm gonna have to be careful with that. But here we have vehicle mode for Studio Series 86 Ratchet. Looking all ratchety, well, this part here, this sucks. <laughs> um, It's completely void of paint back here. I am actually thankful it's not clear plastic. I don't want that, but man, it really could have used some paint. That's that's unfortunate. And not only that, but just the fact how that back window doesn't really line up height-wise with the side windows. It's 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 out of whack, man. It's out of whack. Terrible job, Hasbro. Oh no. And even the windows that are clear, it's not very impressive what you see on the inside. It's just a bunch of robot bits. So that's 
that's kind of needless. And the one piece that I would have liked to have been clear plastic, this is not. Oh, not doing it for me, not doing it for me. Also, the front of the vehicle here isn't exactly uh, G1-ish. I guess they had to change that for like copyright issues. I think uh, G1, Ironhide, and Ratchet are a cherry vanette. So yeah, it's, it's very different. Thankfully though, uh, this bottom section with the bumper and, the, and I think like the headlights, it's, it's not present in robot mode. So you only see the very top silver parts, which actually do uh, match much better with G1. So I do appreciate that at least. But of course the Lazy Eyebrow famously made a replacement piece for this front part, which I think I would end up using for an eventual repaint myself. Um, make it look as good as we can. And does Ratchet not have some kind of a red stripe on the side? I always forget. Looks like a lot of white. I don't know if he would have these back windows and just have the regular red cross on the actual ambulance. I think he would have that, right? I may try to modify that as well on an eventual repaint. I mean... It is very much a white vehicle, you know? It does what it does just fine, I guess. But some of the panel lining details could have been a bit better though. And you can definitely see like on the bottom of the van, um, just this whole pelvic region, like he is really thrusting the hell out of that ground. I'm sure it doesn't impede the rolling, it rolls fine, that's great. Um, it just kind of sticks out a little bit. Looks like you can store the weapons in vehicle mode. And I do love it when the weapons try to recreate some kind of like an exhaust look. Um, which an ambulance wouldn't really have this, <laughs> but I'm glad it's there. That looks, that looks pretty cool. I can dig that. The booklet also says you can remove the siren and clip the weapons up on top. I'm not going to do that. Ratchet always being kind of colorless always affects the look of it for me, but you know, it does a decent job of recreating G1, so I'm happy to have it. All right, we're going to put them back into robot mode here. That last connection piece is always so, so terrifying and it's not so hard in the removal. Um, stay right here by Link. Keep an eye on him, Link. How are we feeling? One more box? We good? Oh, yes. We're ready. Here we go. Walmart box. Um, do I know what's in here? No, but there is a date. December the 18th. Let's see what I got myself for Christmas. There we go. Let's find out together, shall we? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, man. I totally forgot about these. <laughs> oh, yeah, Walmart had these on sale. We have um, Autobot Hot Rod, basically the G1 toy, and Autobot Hound from the Transformers the movie repainted into their um, cartoon look, right? So we have this guy, Hot Rod, very much not in red. He's more in that hot pinkish violet kind of a color. And of course, Hound. I've actually never owned either of these figures way back in the day in G1. Um, I think I did have, yeah, I did have Hot Rod in the commemorative re-release years ago, which were super expensive. These were cheap, however. Never had Hound though. How appropriate to have a, a G1 Hound now, right? You know what? Let me open up Hot Rod first. Let's do Hot Rod first. Ah, this is, this is a treat. Is it better than animated jazz though? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's totally it. Little packaging here. A little G1 book. This isn't how they look like in the original ones, though. Not by a long shot. Um, I think that for these repaints, they don't have any actual die cast on these, right? It's just all plastic, which I'm perfectly okay with. I always did love Hot Rod's vehicle mode, especially in the toy. Man, it just looks so great. And here in the actual cartoon colors, it's amazing. Wait, is there actual die cast? I think the feet were originally die cast and they are feeling really cold. So I guess they're passing the cold touch test, huh? I can't, I can't tell, I can't. <laughs> Somebody tell me in the comments, let me know. Um, you know what? We don't need instructions for this guy, right? We don't need instructions. I'm not sure where to start though. There, yeah, ah, yes. That pops out and, oh, I think you just expand. There we go. Should, ah, uh, yeah, we got this. We got this right uh, got something ah yes god he is so hollow oh these rotate like that got it wrist rotation awesome i love it and i think finally i'm gonna rotate this piece up like that ah uh, there you go g1 hot rod in all of his g1 glory looking super g1ified here yeah this is what i remember this guy looking like i mean it's it's just impressive to see him in these colors you know without having to do any 
actual kind of a repaint. I definitely prefer the red though, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I prefer the red. I forgot what I ended up paying for this. I mean, it was some, something crazy cheap. And I do believe the tires are rubber. They're very soft. Not bad, not bad at all. Got him there with his weapons, fully weaponed out. The back, I mean, the back of a lot of G1 figures is like nothing to really much to look at, you know? And you see all the hollowness back here. All the hollowness right up in the chest. Just an empty cavity waiting for a matrix of leadership. <laughs> Man, this is really just like a nostalgia piece, you know? Would I ever repaint this myself? Absolutely not. No, why, why would I even bother with this? No, I would not. It's a great paint job as is. It doesn't need to be messed with really any further. It looks great. I like it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, though. I don't think I'm going to put it up on display like just Hot Rod and Hound G1, you know? I don't know. I think they're probably gonna stay in the box for right now. Put them right over here. And then let's take a look at, I think what I'm looking forward to the most. Oh, look at that. Oh man, that is tiny. Quite a few accessories on this guy, okay. Whoa, wow, some of these actually come on a runner. Interesting, wasn't expecting that. I think that's how it is in G1, right? On the G1 toy. Uh, I think on this guy, I may actually need the instructions. Oh, wow, man, they don't make them like this anymore holy shit this is just awesome again i can't tell if they're rubber tires or if it's just like a real soft nylon plastic um i'm not sure but just the fact that they're soft tires is awesome he does have his spare tire clip it i guess right onto the back and his gas tank i didn't actually add a gas tank for um buzzworthy detritus maybe i can still add one you know we'll have to make it as g1 as possible man that is a really good jeep that is a really good jeep wow check that out man that is freaking awesome just great there is a slight hint of an interior dash interior detailing uh no steering wheel though that's fine now hang on a second this is uh without a doubt a jeep right so did jeep give us the oh yeah yeah definitely 100 percent. we got the actual jeep logo here in the back of the packaging they kind of had to at this point right man i wish we would have gotten that for uh detritus <laughs> but that is so cool i love this very much oh he's got the weapon that goes on the back of the jeep here i know that that in the g1 toy this is its own weapon and then the weapon that he has for bot mode is separate um whereas i guess traditionally nowadays you just stick his gun back here to recreate that look but no this is totally separate i don't know how accurate this is to real life if that's an actual real life like gun that these jeeps had i don't know i kind of doubt it not a gun guy not really a car guy <laughs> but that looks great that looks great. Oh, but it's also different from his shoulder mounted weapon. That's what he's going to use in bot mode. And the uh, missiles here on the runner are what's going to go into the uh, shoulder mounted weapon. I think in the G1 toy, you had a little um, gimmick where you press a button and they would pop out. Can't really do that nowadays, all right? It's kind of a kind of a hazard for kids. But just that it gives you the runner is, is pretty cool. I don't even think I'm going to take one out. I think I'm going to leave it as is. Let me see if I can figure this out without the instructions. Oh, I already see something popping out. Holy shizzle. Oh, that feels kind of loose, though. Okay, so these wheels are just folding back. I know that G1 Hound had, like, the stubbiest arms. Like, I don't even think he has actual arms on the toy. Let me not lose anything. Oh, I see. The seats kind of collapse. The most chunkiest feet of any bot that we are ever going to see. Wow, is that really how he transformed? No way. Ooh, I don't want to force that. Oh, this rotates. Got it. And then the arms. Arms. The uh, windshield folds down as well. That looks about as houndy as you're going to get. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah, nothing much to this guy. Um, then he's got his weapon. Is this the actual weapon that he came with originally? Looks really thin. I know that there was a confu uh, some kind of confusion with the original box art for the G1 toy, whereas the, the 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 weapon is pretty long. It's almost like a sniper rifle kind of a weapon. But because of the angle that it was drawn in the box, um, it got it got shortified for the cartoon show, which is super funny how that happened. Uh, this, I guess, clips onto the side here. No articulation there. Does a head turn? No. The head might not turn, but the way that it's painted, so good. It is so good. <laughs> Check that out. G1 Hound in all of his G1 glory here. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but the way that the face is painted with those baby blue eyes expertly just looks fantastic. Yeah, the arms are <laughs> super tidy, but I mean, that's what they were able to achieve back in those days. And the ginormous stumpified feet. 
on this guy. It just looks so precious. I love it. I love it so much. Ah, this is so good. So good. So fitting to get him right now too. It still kind of saddens me to read all of the news about the canceled Buzzworthy Bumblebee line and the uncertainty of where we're going to get the eventual Studio Series Hound, which it seems like we're going to get him now in that five pack apparently, which definitely lives up to the original G1 Hound. Love this guy. Fantastic stuff. Put him right here. Hey everyone, as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all very much. I am going to continue working on Slug and hopefully have him done fairly soonish. Still don't have an exact date, but I will keep on hammering away at him. Dom, thank you once again for the fantastic figure, my dude. I think you've unlocked my desire to recollect the original animated figure, so thank you for that. Appreciate it. But for reals, man, thank you so much. And the rest of you can catch me on all the social medias. Links are always down below. As mentioned before, I'm on Twitch Fridays and weekends, where not only am I still playing Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom with pants, but I'm also trying to finish up a project for the animated Pixel Prime 2.0 that I'm hoping will get done pretty soon. But if you cannot catch me live, I also upload them to my second YouTube channel, Hobbies with Jose Gaming. And you can support the channel by heading over to the merch store. Get yourself one of these awesome mugs. Oh, good stuff. And of course you can support for free by hitting the like and subscribing and leaving a nice comment too. That helps out a lot. But I will see you all real soon. Yeah, the Shozy store package is still coming. Don't worry. <laughs>